in all test history. Lords and the 200th match between England and Australia. It wasn't perhaps hospitable of England to win the toss and back, but they probably thought it was their turn. They lost Edrich in half an hour before the rain reminded us that it's part of English cricket history, and often a maker of it too. For it stirred the wicket to such anger that the ball spat up at the batsman. Boycott lent on his studious technique, and Milburn once struck with splendid power. Before the shattering hailstorm, which broke over the ground and first turned it into a winter landscape, and then flooded it, so that even the next day's play seemed doubtful. But the Lord's pitch recovered to an amazing firmness for some memorable cricket. Milburn announced himself in his first over. And he went on to play an innings to warm the heart. Not reckless, he was content to defend against the good ball. But he hit anything hittable with all the power of those huge forearms. And when Cowper, who'd been so successful at Old Trafford, came on, he greeted him violently enough to rattle any bowler. It all looked so simple. And so mighty. And Boycott, in his wisdom, was content to play the quieter part. No two reactions to Colin Milburn's innings, only disappointment when it ended as it had progressed in an attacking stroke. It was never quite the same again. But soon Cowdery was playing with the unhurried ease of the great batsman, correct as the textbook and sometimes masterly. And Barrington was going his usual work in the way, building an innings piece by piece. The statisticians noted that Cowdery scored his 2,000th run against Australia. And so, soon afterwards, did Barrington. All seemed to be going well, if slowly, for England, when the Australian pace bowlers, with an access of fire, changed everything. Gravely was out to a glorious catch. And Barrington went off with an injured finger. So Knight and Knott were left to play out the day for such profit as they could muster. So to Lord's Test Saturday, the great occasion of the English cricket year, and the disappointment of so many who'd come so eagerly. The batsmen made a few appearances in intervals of the drizzle, but the sum total of it all was. 13 overs in three bleak, brief periods. Two more wickets, only 37 runs, and the chance of a finish almost washed away. Monday was a little, but crucially clearer. Less than two hours were lost to that plague of the summer, which once more implanted devilry in the pitch. The English bowlers made the ball move off the seam, and their fieldsmen supported them magnificently. Walters countered manfully, but of the other Australian batsmen, only Gleeson reached double figures. <laughs> the Lord's Test is cricket's royal occasion, and even the rain respected it. Jarman, hurt while keeping wicket, came into bat and took his first ball from no spiteful length straight on the old injury. The English bowlers, especially Brown, were in their natural element, and they cut down the innings for 78. But they followed on with a new competence and determination. It might be said that the English bowlers were no longer fresh, but any bowler's fresh if he's taking wickets, and the fact is that Laurie, as everyone always expects, was immovable.
Red Pop, for his part, stood a foot taller than he'd done in the first innings. The pair of them saw Australia safely down to the end of the day. Both sides knew that everything depended on Tuesday morning, and the rain took Tuesday morning. In fact, it took more than half the scheduled playing time of the match. England had just as much time left as they'd taken to bowl at the first Australian innings. But this time, though Laurie went early, Red Pal stayed, and Cowper with characteristically cool common sense, stayed with him until the danger was staved off. True, after Red Pal went, Underwood whipped out Walters, and Sheehan looked much less than happy. But time had already made Australia safe. And though Cowdery ringed their batsmen round with close catchers, a fantastic field for a slow bowler, Chapel clear-mindedly and firmly batted down to the end of a draw, which even the most partisan Australian will admit to be ill luck for England. A draw, but memorable as Milburn's match. <laughs>